It's listed as vulnerable. It's an incredibly rare snake, and it's only found in the forests of KZN in South Africa. It also has the highest venom yield of all the venomous snakes. It's docile, but deadly. The area around St. Lucia in northern KwaZulu-Natal is our location. The reason? Thickly wooded prime coastal dunes and forest, low altitude and high humidity. This is the zone for gaboon vipers. The Isimangalisa forest is the only habitat in South Africa that is home to the gaboon viper. Now consider that 80% of snake species are non-venomous. 20% have the venom that is strong enough to kill you. So a lot of the snake species out there are not deadly. Unfortunately, the gaboon viper falls into that 20%. So you've got to watch your step. Now, can you spot the snake in this picture? It's on the upper right side of your screen. The gaboon viper lives on leafy forest floor and is perfectly camouflaged for its habitat. Also called the gaboon adder, it has a triangular, leaf-shaped head which can grow to as big as a human hand in size. It's an impressively painted snake with a skin pattern in geometric black, brown and cream. A placid nocturnal animal, its claim to fame are its fangs, which are the longest of any venomous snake in the world. Having moved from Chicago in the USA to be closer to this charismatic snake species, herpetologist and researcher Jonathan Warner is not happy with remaining at a distance. He's using transmitters to get even closer. The VHF tracking telemetry that John's using has a range of about 300 to 400 meters. John, how effective is it? Most of the time, very effective. Uh, one of the things with telemetry, and especially telemetry uh, involving reptiles, is uh, they're very cryptic, very low to the surface, um, and so you can run into problems having obstacles in the way, like trees. Uh, in the case of the Gaboon Viper, most of my radio telemetry is done in this coastal dune forest, um, so a lot of topography. Luckily for the Gaboon, uh, it's really only during the mating season that they move uh, quite far to find mates, the males, so most of the time it's relatively easy to find. So this uh, receiver right here does the trick. How many Gaboons have got transmitters in them? Over the last couple of years, I've tracked 11 different gaboons, a nice mix of male and female, six males and four females, so 11 in total. And this data is ultimately going to tell us what? One of the things that we're really hoping to get from this study uh, is a better knowledge of the ecology of the gaboon viper in South Africa. So basically finding out what it's doing at what time of year, uh, a little bit of, of things like what it's feeding on in a protected area, uh, their movements over long periods of time, in the hopes that if we know more about what the species is actually doing on the ground, that can inform management who can then implement policies that will be constructive to the conservation of the species. Snakes live silent, hidden lives, especially the gaboon viper, which is rarely seen. They're lazy snakes, often not moving for days on end, and they hunt by ambush. If you disturb a gaboon, you'll hear a series of long hisses. But they strike with reluctance, which is a good thing for us humans. However, when the snake moves, it does so at lightning speed. Already listed as vulnerable, we're losing gaboons at a rapid rate. By placing transmitters under their scales, we're able to track, research and learn more about their lives. One of the research snakes is collected and carefully placed in a box. Their slow-moving habits make them easy to catch, but be careful not to annoy them. Their venom can kill. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, it's off to the operating room. Whatever the species, preparation for medical procedures is always thorough and meticulous. David, looks like we're in for a little bit of bush surgery. It is bush surgery in a sense, although it's pretty simple what we do. You know, we're really just opening up the abdominal cavity and then dropping the transmitter in, into, the, into the cavity. So we're not fiddling with internal organs or having to remove anything or have to clamp off blood vessels or anything like that. There we go. Nice and gentle. Okay. It's beautiful, the colour. Lovely, yeah. This is a very nice specimen here. Yeah? It's healthy. Okay, and there we go. Anesthetics going in. It's like all good doctors. It happens so gently and quietly, <laughs> nobody even knows. And it's in. Not quite. I'm going to just repeat this on the other side. Okay. Just because of the volume. And you're doing that into his muscle? Yes. Okay, we've got about half an hour. Half an hour to wait. So we'll put him back in and let him take a little nap. Why so long? It's got a lot to do with the snake's metabolism. In fact, most of your cold-blooded uh, animals and reptiles, basically, they um, take much longer for anaesthetics to in induce anaesthesia, but in the same um, token, it, it takes that much longer to recover. In a mammal, it will go to sleep within a minute and it will wake up within an hour. That's the difference. With the snake back in its box, we play the waiting game, hoping the anaesthetic takes effect. She's searching for the truth. On Wild Limited, 30 minutes has passed, and we're looking to see if the Gaboon Viper is asleep. It's got confidence in my injection. The snake's out cold and ready for its procedure. But before that begins, all kinds of data are taken. Um, I just got to tube the head to do the measurement real quick. Okay. Okay, so with reptiles, you take what's called a SVL measurement, snout vent length. Um, oftentimes, lizards and snakes, particularly lizards in the wild, lose their tails or it gets bitten off. Um, and so the most reliable way of measuring them is to measure from the tip of the snout to the cloacal vent. So that's what we're going to do right now and also take a, a tail measurement as well. Okay, this just under 96 centimeters. You can see this one's a male. Vipers in general have very short stubby tails, but females in particular, a female gaboon viper this size, their tail would probably only be about here. Uh, male snakes, the hemipenes, which are the reproduction organs, are kept inside the tail, and so the males is usually a little bit uh, bulkier and, and uh, heavy set. And that's because the male snake has got two penises. It's got two penises. The hemipenes is, is actually a double barrel. Um, they only use one for mating, though, uh, and the other one is sort of kept as a reserve. Mm, as a backup. As a backup. <laughs> okay. We'll also just take a quick fang measurement. Okay. Now, what you're going to see when John pulls the <coughs> cylinder off the snake's head is something a little bit scary. Snakes don't have eyelids, so they can't close their eyes. So be careful, that eye is going to be looking at you. The Gaboon Viper really is one of the most incredible snakes in the world. Uh, they have a lot of uh, unique adaptations. Uh, it's the largest viper species in Africa. It has the longest fangs of any snake in the world, up to five centimeters long, absolutely massive fangs. Obviously very beautiful, uh, very well camouflaged. Um, and is really one of the more interesting reptiles in this part of the world. What we'll do right now is just give him a quick... Oh, there's a bit of movement there. Somebody's still awake. <laughs> what do you want to do, Dave? Perhaps just maybe just give him a little bit longer. Top him up. We can, we can top him up a little bit. If you can just secure the head there for me. Okay. And um, that's the other thing is docile as these snakes look. They also have one of the fastest strikers. So it looks like a fat slug, but when it needs to be, it can go into action very quickly. Well, just like human beings, snakes also have different personalities and different metabolisms, and drugs are going to affect each individual animal on a different level. So better to be safe than sorry. A little bit of a top-up, 
and now we're just going to wait it out. John, how are you feeling now? I'm uh, still feeling good. Uh, it's always a little bit awkward when the snake doesn't do what we want it to do, um, but it seems that he's just having a more of a, a slower reaction to the drugs, and so it's just, like you said, better safe than sorry, and we will put him down for a little bit longer, and hopefully he'll be ready to go in a few minutes here. How different is it working with reptiles versus mammals? It's entirely different. You know, within mammals, you'll get differences, but they're, they're subtle. Whereas it's dramatic when it comes to working with a reptile. Everything changes, and you have to sort of bear that in mind. Working with the Gaboon Viper, it's a very rare snake that we have here in South Africa. It must be a special occasion for you. It is, and also being a local, so I've been familiar with, you know, just how important these, these snakes are. And I remember when I first came here, finding snakes on the road, and um, quite often having to pick them up, get, you know, to prevent them from being run over. And I haven't seen a snake on the road now for the last sort of eight years, and that's a clear indication to me that, you know, things are happening. That uh, they're definitely far fewer snakes, and it's, you know, it's critically important that we do you know, look after them within, within this area. The Gaboon Viper population is declining rapidly. In spite of keeping a low profile, these reptiles are persecuted. Human habitation encroaches on their habitat. They get run over by cars, killed just because they're snakes, used for mooty. And thanks to their peaceful nature, high coloration and extreme toxicity, they're prized in the pet trade. What people forget is that snakes are hypersensitive creatures, not nearly as malicious or strong as people might think. Let's be honest, reptiles and snakes specifically must be one of the most disliked creatures out there. Why do you like them? Snakes as organisms in the environment are extremely interesting. A lot of people look at reptiles and they sort of think of them as prehistoric, very um, uh, sort of lower on the scale of, of evolution and things like that. Uh, but they really um, are extremely efficient uh, predators and efficient um, at filling their niche in their environment and in their ecosystem. And it's just, uh, just absolutely fascinating for me, at least. <laughs> the Gaboon Viper is a very rare snake. Do you believe it's something we should be proud of here in South Africa and something we should be protecting? It's definitely something that's worthy of conservation merit. For example, uh, it's just one of, of many species that live in this coastal dune corridor right here on the northeast corner of South Africa. And so along with things like Sitaro's dwarf chameleon and the Mozambique shovel snout snake and a lot of other reptiles and amphibians, not to mention birds and mammals and plants and tree orchids and things like that, there's a lot of, of unique flora and fauna uh, in this part of the country. It's, and so it's very important, not just for the sake of the gaboon viper, to just to study it and to try and conserve it, in the sense that as we protect the Gaboon Viper, we're protecting the ecosystem that it's in. And so um, any step forward, even if it's studying a snake, um, is a good one. Back in the operating room, it's time to see if the anesthetic worked the second time around. A gentle squeeze confirms that the snake's completely knocked out. Even then, handling's kept to a minimum, with good reason. Uh, gaboon vipers, um, one of the most amazing things about them is, of, of course, their fangs, largest fangs of any snake species in the world. And they use those fangs um, in feeding to inject venom deep into the body tissue of their prey. Um, kills them very quickly and very impressive to look at as well, as we'll see now. Opening up his jaw, you'll notice that the hinged fangs are folded back in the mouth. But when deployed, they act like hypodermic needles, injecting cytotoxin, a venom that breaks down tissue. Gaboon viper fangs are long and often break off in prey items. But within two or three days, a backup fang will move forward as a replacement. Are you going to stick his head in the 